In this video, we'll focus on taking a bunch of data and trans translating it to a graph so that we can use this graph to help solve a traveling salesman problem. Uh, and in um, in a lot of the algorithms, you'll see I'll, I'll be using graphs to solve the traveling salesman problems because I think that that is the easiest way to do it. Uh, and I strongly suggest that when you're working on your homework, you do the same thing and you don't try to solve them without the graph because it is very difficult uh, to do without actually drawing a graph. But in each in each traveling salesman problem, there's a common uh, set of elements or uh, parts to the problem. There's always a traveler, like someone or a group of people who are trying to go between a different city. Um, there's a set of locations that are to be visited um, or, you know, the sites in the problem, like in the biking examples, cities, but it could be countries, it could be uh, different points on the same city. It doesn't really matter, but those are going to be represented by the vertices. Uh, and then we have a set of costs. Basically, how much does it cost, which we also refer to as the weights, to get from point A to point B or from point B to point C or whatever, where those costs could be, as I said before, um, mileage could be dollars or you know cost in mon monetary value uh even in time whatever the units uh don't really matter typically we just um have have a generic set of numbers to associate to the cost and those costs are are the edges basically you know connected to price between those points and the edges can help us visualize the cost between them uh, so let's look at an example. It says the given table provides the amount of time in minutes that it takes to get between five different sites in San Diego. Um, draw a graph whose edge weights are given in the table below, then find the optimal Hamilton circuit. So basically, if we were trying to solve these problems, let's just start with an example and look at how we find it. Uh, and I'll use this example to try to um, explain, you know, what the difficulties that arise and why we have so many different methods of solving these problems. So let me go back. I'm going to, I'm going to switch to the packet here. Um, and that way I can draw Cause again, I, I suggest that you, um, that you draw these things and you can use the packet, which already has a lot of the things set up. And just a reminder, Hamilton um, path or circuit is a circuit that visits all the vertices exactly once. And the only difference between a path and a circuit is the same as it was before. Okay, so um, basically we have a bunch of different locations, A, B, C, D, and E. And we could envision those as being random points in San Diego. And now, for those who are map people, you could think, well, you could actually take a real map, like in Google Maps, and say, okay, these are the locations of those five points. But when you're actually making a graph to help solve these problems, you typically don't want to use a geographic location of, of those objects, but really um, set up those points so that they are spread apart on your graph. Um, and you'll see why in a minute. But basically, I, I try to make each of the locations in a somewhat of a circular pattern. Um, it just makes things a little bit easier. Um, and actually, you can also make these graphs on your computer, which is something I'm going to show you how to do uh, in a later video too. So uh, like, like, like I said, a lot of times this, this math can be done by hand, but you can also use various resources to um, help, especially now that we're on, on now that we're online, uh, we're on our computer all the time. And, you know, we can make use of those resources where we might as well, if we're already doing the homework online. Um, but anyways, uh, basically what I would rep label each vertex using the letter, um, because, um, you know, we have those points and we want to be able to distinguish which is which. And basically, well, I have A to B and I and the table gives me, well, how much time does it take to get from A to B? Basically, 15 minutes is the weight of AB or the cost associated in this case. And I can kind of draw this and it can help me imagine, okay, if I'm going from those points, that's how long it's going to take me to get from there to there. And in the same way, I could label each of the other um, times that I have in my table. How, whoops. How long does it get? take to get from A to E, D, or C. So it says A to E is 30 minutes, A to D uh, is 10 minutes, and so on. But what I would actually do before I got too much farther is actually finish my graph, because if I start labeling it too soon, it'll be really easy to have the graph get overwhelmed with numbers and lines that, and have them all be really crazy. So what I would suggest doing before actually labeling all of the weights is actually completing the graph and fully forming each of the connections. And unfortunately, I've accidentally made a pentagram here. Uh, that was an accident. Um, anyways, the shape the shape that you draw it in does not matter. Um, it's just as long as they're you know 
but basically we're trying to draw them in a spread out fashion so that in my whole point here is when i'm trying to do ad and ac when i'm labeling these lines i want to make sure i know what those numbers are because say if, for example i was to put 10 right here if i then go back and look at this it's kind of hard to tell where well, is is that 10 on edge eb or is it ad or where the heck is that edge so there's a few tricks you can do. One thing you can do is if you actually like label the numbers sideways like this, then it becomes a little bit more obvious that that 10 is attached to that line because I've made it uh, on top of it. Or you can kind of put it through it like this 10. I don't, I don't personally like doing that myself. Um, um, and what I would usually do is just put it in a location where it's kind of hard to, you know, mistake it with something else. So if I put it kind of there in the middle, I can kind of tell that's on uh, AD. And I mean, as long as you know, that's all that's important, but it's helpful to draw it so that if someone else was to look at your graph, they could tell. Like, you know, when I'm grading your test, if you draw your graph uh, and it's a little bit confusing, you know, that that might get me get me confused when I'm looking at your work. But anyways, AC was 20. I'll put that over here. Then that's pretty unmistakable. Um, and basically, I'm just going to put all the numbers on the graph. So BC is 25. Uh, BD is 35 put that right there um be is 15 that should be good um cd is 20 minutes uh ce is 16 minutes and de is 30 minutes and anyways that uh that's good enough for me uh and i think that's clear enough to find so basically there's my graph this and now I have it fully built for solving this situation. It says, then find the optimal Hamilton circuit. So in this question, the, we haven't really discussed, well, how do we actually do this? But I wanted to sort of give you, well, what's some common sense? How would I, what would be the best answer? So imagine if these are all my errands and I had to go, uh, you can imagine that this problem models a situation where I have errands to do. I need to do, let's say I live at A and I'm trying to go to B's. I'm trying to go to B, C, D, and E to do an errand at each location. And I wanted to know, well, wh how would I minimize the amount of time I've spent traveling between these locations, right? I could do them in alphabetical order, but with that, that's not necessarily going to be the most um, obvious way of doing it. Uh, and, and imagine that we are a business manager and we have someone doing these errands every day or something. You can imagine how planning it out and figuring out, well, what's the fastest way of doing this? could make sense, especially over repetitive time. Now, if you're only doing it once, uh, maybe it doesn't make sense to um, take 10 minutes to find the best answer, but you can imagine in a management situation why uh, thinking it through uh, would be important. But basically, my goal is to figure out what's the cheapest way of doing it. And let me go ahead and just, I'll, I'll highlight the correct answer, but you can imagine, well, we would try to use all the edges with the lowest numbers. Like I could see, well, there's a 10 here, that's going to be the shortest distance. And what if I was to try to develop a route here that used all the smallest numbers? So if I went in order, um, like 10, 10, 15, 15, I can see that I can link up a pretty good looking answer. And actually, I can actually connect all of those and form a Hamilton circuit using all of the smallest numbers. And notice that a Hamilton circuit should go between each of the vertices exactly once. So A, B, E, C, D, A would be the one way that I could write this answer if I was going forwards. Uh, a, oops, this is a highlighter. A, B, C, sorry, A, B, E, C, D, A. Or if I was to go it the other way, it would be A, D, C, E, B, A. And basically, I'm using the highlighting to highlight the Hamilton circuit, and I'm using it to visualize, well, what order could I go through them? And sometimes, like, a lot of people, or not maybe not a lot, but some people don't really like graphs or have a little bit of a harder time understanding all the information, um, but sometimes writing them out in uh, alpha, like an alphabetical order. Basically, it's just it's very similar to the shapley schubig power distribution where we're trying to write out the permutations of these and figure out, well, which permutation is the best. And that's, that's kind of how the brute force algorithm works. Uh, and we're going to do that at the very end of this chapter. So don't worry about all that for now. Um, but basically, uh, 
what we have is the best answer. And and going back to, well, why is this the best answer? Notice that this one's the best because I literally used all of the smallest numbers, the shortest times to get between each of the points, right? I didn't use any of the big numbers, I used all the small numbers. Now, in general, it's not possible to do this. And this is the, this is the complexity in this chapter is, you can't always just use all the best options. It won't necessarily formulate a Hamilton circuit. In this case, I was able to find a Hamilton circuit that used the smallest numbers, but in general, it won't work. So in those situations, how do we actually find it? And how do we know what the best option is? That's why we're going to be developing these different algorithms uh, for going through them and finding them. Um, and so uh, actually, 6.2 gets into some math that I'm going to do a little bit later in the chapter. So what I'd advise you do for your homework is try to work on 6.4 and 6.5 first, and then go back and do 6.2 and 6.3. Um, and that, that's kind of the way I go through the videos. So, uh, that, you know, my recommendation would be to just actually finish all of the lectures first. But anyways, the you can go a little bit out of order because I'm going a little bit out of order from the homework. Sorry if it's frustrating, but I think it makes most the most sense. So anyways, next video will be on the nearest neighbor. Oh, but actually, sorry, I forgot. The The final answer often we're looking towards for is what is the total cost of that circuit? So in either case, if we add up all of the legs of that trip, 15 plus 15 is 30, um, plus 20 is 50, plus 10 is 60, plus 16 is 76. What we could do is we could actually solve our problem and figure out what is the actual total cost? How long would it take us to travel between all, all of our errands? In this case, we're gonna be driving for 76 total minutes um, for our errands, but that's way better than any other option. And also, what's the value in actually planning here? Like think of if I was to just do a more obvious solution. Let's just say I was to do them in alphabetical order, A, then B, then C, then D, then E, or kind of go in a big loop like that. We can kind of see, well, what, how, how long would that take if we were to just go in order? 15 plus 25 is 40, 60, 90, 120. Notice that like if we were to not plan and just sort of arbitrarily randomly travel, it could take way, way longer to get all that crap done. And for those of us who like to be opt optimized and not waste our time, you know, my whole point here is thinking a little bit about it and planning can save quite a bit of time, especially in a situation where we are doing something over and over and over again and we really would like to optimize these processes. You can actually use these sort of algorithms that we're going to learn for a lot of other problems other than just traveling too. Uh, and we'll kind of encounter some of those uh, in the homework. Um, but anyways, um, next up is the first algorithm, which we refer to as the nearest neighbor algorithm. And also, you might have been wondering, how did I get this answer? Basically, I just showed you the answer. I didn't really talk about how I did it, but we have different step-by-step -step procedures for finding the answer. That's what you should be focusing on is learning the different methods. And, and we'll be, as usual, kind of comparing, well, what are the answers we get and how do they compare with each other?